Good morning, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today we're working on an LP tank. This is uh, my personal LP tank at my place. Uh, I just got set up. I bought it from a farmer and it's just kind of extra storage. Uh, we're in Minnesota and so it gets very cold. In fact, right now it's pretty cold. It feels like it's probably about, I don't know, 25 degrees. Anyway, so uh, uh, we have here a first stage regulator. Now, for those of you who don't know, a first stage regulator is the one that comes off of your tank first, typically anyway. So uh, what, this, what this regulator does is it's able to reduce the pressure from whatever the pressure is in the tank down to the pressure in your initial line where it goes to the house. So here you can see this line going down that goes over and up to the house. And uh, that reduces, this reduces it down to 10 PSI. So... <clears throat> This is a good old made in the USA Rego regulator. Rego, Rego. And the model of this one is, uh, let's see here, LV343TR. So I'll try to link in the description to these. They're a little bit hard to find. If I can't find them, you might have to just contact your local propane supplier and ask them for a first stage regulator. And you're also gonna need a pigtail. Uh, this is just what you use to connect to the regulator initially. I've seen a couple different styles of these. They have them where it's a, they have a bigger style of this regulator where both ends have this bigger size uh, attachment. And so depending on which style you need them, I've seen them called hogtails and pigtails. So <coughs> without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this hooked up here. So we're going to worry about getting our regulator position in here first. As you can see, I already have my copper line ran. This is a 3 8 inch copper, and I've already got a flare adapter on there. I will put a uh, link to my video about how to make a flare if you are needing to do that. Anyway, so we're going to work on kind of figuring out where this thing is going to sit in here. I'm kind of anticipating it sitting somewhere somewhere right around here and then we can kind of attach it you can attach it to this plate here but um, we'll probably use some zip ties so we got this pigtail so we'll probably have to put a coil in this we'll see what it looks like here I'll bring you back in a minute gotta get the video to pause now, in case you're wondering, this is what that end looks like. This is the side that attaches onto the, uh, into the valve of the tank. So this threads in right over here. <clears throat> now, another thing to note is that this, uh, these threads are left-hand threads. So you screw it into the left in order to tighten it into the valve. So try to remember that so you don't end up messing up the threads because you're cranking on it so hard trying to get it to go in or out so we'll get that in there here and see how it turns out now before we fully tighten that in there we're going to attach uh, this smaller end here to our uh, regulator this side is uh, soldered on so it doesn't rotate on the pipe this side obviously rotates on the pipe, so this is much better to use this <coughs> to attach this side first, otherwise you'll have uh, struggles getting this rotated around it. So we will uh, go ahead and put some pipe dope on this fitting. This is a pipe thread sealant. It's uh, pretty good stuff. I think it's kind of like a Teflon base. And we'll get a little bit of that. And get some of the dope right around here. Pipe thread sealant. That looks good. You uh, don't really need to use thread tape or uh, in this application. Uh, pipe dope would be definitely my first choice. So, get that started in there. And 
we will be able to start tightening it into place here. All right, that's tight on there now. So now we can position it how we want and uh, get it attached. All right, after doing a little bending there, I think this is about the best position that I can get it in. So we're gonna call that good. And uh, then we can attach our main line coming down here. I gotta scoot this down a little bit. Either cut it back and flare it again, but I think I can tuck a little bit more of this copper line under the tank. So we will work on adjusting that. This is not tight yet, but we'll go ahead and do that here in just a second. We'll do that right now, actually. Uh, you can use a crescent wrench whenever possible, so you don't mar up the mar up the threads of your uh, beautiful brand new pigtail, or not the threads, but the the nut itself. It's good and snug there. All right, so we'll uh, get this copper line ready. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, flare nut loose. This basically acts as a union <coughs> so that we can spin it. It's going to be a little bit of pressure in the line here because I had this pressurized from my other tank. There we go. And then we're going to spin this uh, fitting out of this cap. All right, now I've also made up this uh, valve and a short uh, black iron nipple. Uh, this is probably, this is not needed in most situations. Uh, I'm manifolding my tank, so I have this tank and a tank right next to it. And so I'm going to use this in conjunction uh, with uh, when I turn one tank on or the other. So normally you would just use this adapter right into your flare adapter right into your regulator. This is a half inch iron pipe thread by 3 8 flare adapter. So I'm actually gonna spin this back out again so that it's a little bit easier for me to get my wrenches on the regulator. I was a little bit premature on tightening my pipe there. But, <clears throat> so we're going to thread this in here. Now you wanna be careful when you're uh, tightening into a regulator it's a uh, just kind of an aluminum metal and you don't want to over tighten it uh, you can hold this just like so get your wrench around this big square part of the regulator and now we will proceed to tighten the rest of our fittings probably starting right on this end here my other wrench is already the right size so we'll use this one here And we'll just keep doing that until we get it in tight. All right, we got all those fittings tight. So we are ready to put this back on here again, finally. So left-hand threads. Get that started. And now we can connect our 3 8 inch flare side. That all the more it's going to point down. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. There we go. I would like to take the nut back and see how the flare looks lined up to it first. So it looks like I should bend it a little bit more. Yep. So that this uh, face of the copper really lines up nicely with the end of the flare. Get that started. And now we're going to go ahead and snug that up. <clears throat> going to use a combination of our channel lock. I'll link it in the description of these channel locks. These are the best channel locks you can buy. They're made by a company called Nipex. And uh, Nipex is a German brand. And we've used these for years and they just tend to hold up pretty well. They have a lifetime warranty. I've never tried it before, but... I don't think it probably covers teeth wear. That'd be under the normal normal wear and tear category, so that should be good there. And then we'll tighten this one up here. 
I've turned threads again, so it's going to seem like I'm loosening it. Call that good. And now I should be good to turn it on. I'm going to turn this valve on here. Turn my other valve off at the other tank. And always open these valves really slow when you're opening them. There we go. This regulator regulates it down to 10 PSI, and then going into the house, and there's another regulator that regulates it down to like 11 inches water column or so. All right, now we're gonna use some mega bubble leak detector, and just go over these fittings. I'll link in the description to where you can get leak detector as well. This is a weather resistant formula, so it doesn't freeze. Um, if you didn't have any of this handy and you needed to do it right away, you can try to mix up a solution of soap. Uh, you know, even if you follow a recipe, one of those recipes for making uh, kids bubbles, uh, that would be perfect because you just want something that is really going to bubble up should there be any, any gas leakage at all. So obviously you'd be able to smell it too if it's a really bad leak, but So, I'll go ahead and keep doing this, see if we can find any leaks. I think this is looking pretty good here, I'm not seeing anything bubbling, don't smell any gas, so I think it's safe to say that we were successful in that. Might have to align this a little bit, we're getting our cover to close. Yeah, I have to do a little work there, but I won't bore you with that. Now there's the regulator that's uh, on the house, and that's what takes it down to 11 inches or so. So this is a higher pressure line going from the tank to here, just so that you can use a smaller size line, and then, because you can fit, you can push a lot more BTUs through a smaller line at a higher pressure, 10 PSI, and then from here it reduces down the pressure, obviously, and then we have half inch black iron uh, going into the house. So that's pretty much been it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope this helped you out. If it did, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos like this one. Hit that bell icon if you want to be notified about future videos. And yeah, I might try to make another one here just kind of explaining the whole propane system and how it's just supposed to work. But yeah, thanks again. And we'll talk to you in the next video.